I'll give you a virtual tour of what happens when you get a job here at the UMD Rec Sports Program as an operational staff person. We're going to focus today our energy on the weight room, in the cardiovascular room, the core training room, and our group fitness room. Let's go for a little trip. Come on. I want you. <laughs> I want you to meet the welcome staff. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And so what's going to happen is these guys will be here. Their job is, is real, uh, it's a tough job sometimes. they got to make sure that people have the correct passes and the correct credentials to get into this gate to enjoy their experience here. Let's show you how to punch in. Can I get deep in, please? They've already broke the rules by letting me in with all my pass. <laughs> Here's where, you get your, here's where you get your punch card. What you do is you write your name on there, and you simply, when you come into work, if you work, if your schedule is from 4 to 8 p.m., you start at 4 o'clock and you work till 8 o'clock. If you punch in early at 3.45, you will not get paid for that. So just a gentle reminder that what you're scheduled to work is what you work. What this punch card does, it lets your boss know, which is Nikki Olson for the weight room, myself for the personal training and the aerobics instructors and so on, which they don't punch in, but FYI, is it lets us know that you showed up on time, okay? So you get this and you simply punch in, probably doesn't buzz over, you go like this, hit this button, boom, there, there's the time when you start. In this case, it's 1.23 on a Wednesday, then you'll put uh, your name up there, and uh, that's what you'll do. And you'll punch out when you're done. You go ahead and organize your time card in here, and off to the races. Come on. So this room's organized, it's, it's, it's off limits for you other than to come in and get your, to punch in and punch out. Other than that, that's, uh, we have basketballs here for, for students to check out, they're free of charge. We have um, other equipment that's available in our equipment room, which we scan over there. Where that, wherever you see that's, that standard there, just to the right, is our equipment room. We'll talk about that later. Just a quick little introduction. Come over here. What we have here is the pins for the kinesis. These are only for certified kinesis instructors. So a, a certified kinesis instructor will come in, they'll grab the pins, and they'll sign their name when they take them up. For example, Abby took it at today at 7 in the morning. She, we know she had them last. If someone comes in that wants to use room 135, it's the old dance studio. They're going to want to come in, they're going to want to get the keys to the stereo and the room itself. They can go here. But again, they've got to be a certified group fitness instructor. I'm asking that you... No one's going to steal from us or, or cheat us, but just make sure if it's uh, someone that looks a little fishy, don't give them the keys. Let's go check out the weight room. Mm -hmm. upstairs cardio room where we've got all the wonderful cardio equipment and all the fun stuff like that. I'm going to show you the stuff behind the desk here with Hannah today. All right, come on back with me. Hannah, say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is your command center for the upstairs. Now, it's really similar to the stuff downstairs, and later in the video, you'll see the downstairs section. I'll go through the same thing down there. But we got, I just want to point out some stuff for you guys. Glass cleaner, clearly marked. The Virex is stuff that you clean machines with. All located down here in the stuff that's marked cleaning supplies. And you've got some gloves in case you find something that's kind of gross. Anything that you need to uh, take care of just like that. We've got some cleaning towels up here and some more glass cleaner. Right up here is our maintenance request forms. Pop it in here along with a lot of other fun stuff in here. I'll show you just quickly the towel key is right here. So in case you need to change towels, I'll go through that later. Some tape staplers, some notepads, a couple other fun accessories. If the, uh, if the TVs are giving you trouble, that's what the cardio theater trouble ticket looks like. All right, let's pop right down to the next one. It's your first aid kit section. You've got your uh, your mask for CPR, along with a lot of other fun stuff. Extra band-aids, of course, and fun stuff like that. And I just want to point out this to this to you guys. This guy right here. If somebody needs more than a band-aid, all right, more than a band-aid, which means that they fell, they scraped their knee, blah blah blah. You know, hopefully this never happens. But you need to have them make sure that they, that they fill out one of these first after you've given them care, okay? It's really easy. It's all laid out really easy. An eighth grader can do it, so we should be just fine. Real quick, Tom, if someone uh, cuts themselves and there's blood, how do we handle uh, blood that might uh, be dripping on the floor and how do we clean that? Blood will be dripping on the floor. Once the, the person, uh, the client is secured and, and, and treated, then what's happening, you take the Virex and you spray that all down liberally, okay? And I want you to just double check, make sure you have those rubber gloves on, of course, because you don't want bloodborne pathogens. Um, coming in on you, and then you spray it down literally with, with this guy, and using a paper towel to wipe it up and throw it away. So the critical component is wear the rubber gloves. Exactly, wear the rubber gloves. Thank you. Okay, and the last one, of course, down here, takes a little bit, you've got your ball pump. How does that work? This, well, stick it in the ball, after you take out the little thing, and downstairs there's what's called a towel, like a ball pump key, 
and it's kind of looks like a fork, like a fork. So you take out the uh, little pin that holds the air in. You put this in, put this guy on the floor, cup it up, and that works just like that. Really easy. Down here we got a couple extra rubber gloves and some extra bags for the vacuum cleaner. When do we know when the vacuum cleaner is full? When it stops sucking. Is basically the key. That vacuum cleaner is about five hundred dollars. It's a really powerful vacuum cleaner, and when it, when it doesn't suck, then you know you can change the bag. And we'll show that to you down a little bit later. A little bit later. All right, I'll show you a couple more things up here. Sometimes we'll post notes up here so you guys can take a look. Instead of sending out an email, just a quick little note. Um, this one says we're out of paper towels. If you need more, they're located right below the desk. A couple other things I'm going to show you. Um, this is a lock cabinet that controls. The sound system, excuse me, if I can if I can stutter that all the way out there. The sound system. So let's say it's a little bit quiet in here or it's a little bit too loud. Just walk up to the front desk, ask for a supervisor. They'll open that up for you and change the volume, okay? Another thing to point out is your cleaning list, all right? Hannah's got all of her stuff done right so far. The person that comes at 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock will have all these things to do. It's pretty self-explanatory. Check them off when you're done and erase it the next day when you come in if you're the first one. Can we circle back to music? When do we know, um, or how do we know what our music policy is when someone comes in and complains? How would you suggest we handle it? But maybe a faculty member doesn't like this type of music, or someone says it's too loud, or vice versa. What's, what's our policy? Basically, our policy on music is that we try to accommodate most amount of people, okay? So we have it tuned to a, a station that's here in Duluth, all right? So that plays a good variety of, of the oldies, you know, and, and the stuff for today. And it's really hard to get everybody's, you know, happy, fun music time. So we just suggest bringing your iPod or bringing a, a portable music device along with you with headphones so you can listen to your own music. While we're talking about technology, what's the rule with staff and cell phones, customers with cell phones? Good. We don't allow cell phones here for the staff or the patrons here, okay? So anytime you see somebody on a cell phone, just walk up to them and say, excuse me, sir, we don't allow cell phones in here due to one of our policies. We just don't want people talking and chatting on their cell phones. People, when they're on their cell phones, are the same statistically as drunk drivers, okay? Which means you're running, and all of a sudden you become drunk and running, and we all, all good you all are at that, and you fall off the treadmill and we have to deal with you, all right? So, what you want to do is just politely remind them, please, we don't allow cell phones here. Now, staff-wise, you should never have your phone on. You should have your phone carrying with you. Um, there's an emergency phone located right at the front desk, so you shouldn't have to worry about emergencies. But if you're here, drunk on your phone, quote-unquote, and then you're not paying attention to the, to the people that need attention here in the facility. All right. And I'm going to show you guys one more thing. Right back over here is the maintenance request form stuff, okay? And if you come on in here and zoom in, what happens is stuff occasionally breaks here at Rec Sports. So what we do is we, we create a fitness center log for it, okay? So let's say that the treadmill broke, and today's date is the 25th. So we say 1025, the PC equipment broke in the second treadmill, something similar like that. Then we've had to fill out one of these job request forms, and those are located right here, okay? And then what happens here is you just say the date, the location of the job, the person requesting the work, and the explanation. So let's say a treadmill doesn't turn on anymore. So I would just clearly state the treadmill doesn't turn on. I'd make sure to take it off that machine. Then I'd place one of these tickets on it. If I can find it, one of these drawers that says the machine is out of order. Maybe, maybe not. Let's try this one here. Just going clearly tape one of these, that lets our patrons know that the machine is in fact out of order. All right? Come back to here. Now this, when you've complete this, this out, so you only need this top portion, okay? When you're complete with that, you just go ahead and tear this apart. The top copy goes in Steve Paulson's box. The bottom two go into Rod Raymond's box. And that's clear right here. Right there, a little note for you, okay? Then you just circle, yes, the job requested has been handed in. Give it, same thing, the detailed, uh, details of the problem and you're good to go. What are some ways of knowing if equipment's broken down? Basically, what typically happens? Typically what happens is something falls off of it, you get a bolt or you get, um, it doesn't turn back on, it squeaks, it, basically if it sounds really bad, obviously it's not working up to its full potential. We don't want anybody to get hurt and we also don't want to damage our equipment more than it already is. And quite often the customers will let us know as well. And quite often the customer will let us know. And when you walk around, like Hannah does periodically, she'll check for equipment that's broken. 